Okay guys and girls, today we're going to be making one of these. For a lot less than that. And also looking on eBay and looking through different places, these tripods, they're very good. But if we just scroll down, they reckon they'll take up to a 42 inch size TV. But... The maximum weight they'll hold is 25 kilos. And I haven't found many LCD TVs above 26, 27 inch that are less than 25 kilos. And we're trying to mount ourselves a pair of 32 inch today. So uh, let's do this for a lot less than this. Okay then, from here... you're gonna need one of these now you don't want that part to it you don't want that part to it you don't want that part to it but what you do get here and here for 79.99 delivered is two tripods each one bragging they'll hold 40 kilos in weight which is more than enough for what we need and two of these little babies these you probably recognise, they're what they call wrap clamps, usually used for holding lighting on to truss in, vertical truss in and stands. Your light usually attaches to that bolt there and that part there way goes through the stand. And what you do, he says trying to do this one handed again. You know, one day, guys, I'll actually buy a tripod. That part unlocks like that, goes around the stand, and locks into place. But what we're going to do, is we're going to put them on the back of our TV bracket. And two of these, absolutely crack on, £11.99 from Home and Bargain. And you wouldn't believe what's inside them. They're as strong as an ox. We just grab our way in, he says trying to hold the camera while he does it set of instructions all the mounting hardware you're going to need and we don't need half of it because uh, hey guess what it's not going on the wall it's going on one of those stands you've just seen two brackets for the back of the TV Pull the bag off there, and that big knob there, that one, gives you a 10 degrees tilt. So if you're up on stage, and you want the monitors looking down at the audience, that'll give you 10 degrees, which is more than enough. Now, people say things are in pound world, and in home and bargain, for a reason. Well, these are, and this is why they're so cheap. Nothing wrong with them structurally, but they're not quite how they should be. Yeah. Grab our way in there. We take a look at that bracket there. Like that. And then we take a picture of the look of the back of it on the box. If you look, the centre holes are drilled out on the bracket and there's a rubber grommet goes round the hole on the back of the bracket. Well, we're missing the centre holes and we're missing our rubber grommet but don't worry because we don't need the rubber grommet we need the centre holes slightly bigger and slightly different so that means we're going to take the good old drill to it ok then down to business grabbed ourselves a piece of wood because the last thing we want to do is drill through my laminate floor so before we start drilling we're going to measure it out, want that bracket right in the middle, so we've got 45 centimetres there, so 45, half of that when I went to school, worked out at about 22 and a half, so the first thing we want to do is use a sharp screw, seeing as it's painted, and it gives the drill somewhere to start, somewhere to bite, and right in the middle of that first row of holes, 
on the top of the bracket we want to mark out 22 and a half can't see too well so just make it a bit better for me to see and again on the back it, bottom of the bracket in the middle of the row because otherwise when the rails go onto the bracket like that they won't slide the way we want them to so just stay in line with their holes and again we want 22 and a half not easy to do the bottom one because of the way the tape measure sits on there and the most important thing is even if you're slightly off center when you do it make sure with a straight edge that those two holes that you're going to put in are going to line up because otherwise your bracket will end up on the one when it's on the stand okay first thing you want to do is you don't want to go trying to bore through there with a 15 mil drill bit because it's going to blunt the bit up and it's going to make it a hell of a lot harder for you so what you do is first thing is grab yourself a small pilot drill bit that's going to go through there first and I'm not going to subject you to the drilling part because believe me it squeals like hell so I'll leave you here and give you a shout back just as we finish drilling and this people's is why I won't subject you to the drilling when we put the bigger hole through there you go one drill that TV bracket do the centre holes in like it shows you on the picture from home and bargain on the back of the box £11.99 they're usually 40 odd pounds a piece I'd rather drill two holes and save myself 30 odd pounds absolute winner anyways take that wrap clamp spin the nut off it take the washer off it through our carefully selected hole sized hole on with the washer on with the nut and tighten it all down only thing you've got to remember when you do this is to make sure that your wrap clamp ends up level once you've got your first one same again with the second one Don't forget to mention, when you're drilling out this hole, make sure you've got enough room for the nut up against the edge of the bracket, otherwise you're going to come unstuck. And so far, we're good to go. Okay, guys, look at this. It's a treat for you. Not only is it a how-to, but it's an unboxing as well, all in one video. This one, JBM TV, not the best in the world, but hey, what we're going to do is take it on the road, rattle it about and risk breaking it. LCD screens get broken easy, so the last thing you want to do is spend £400 on a 32-inch LCD TV and wreck it on the first day out. At least with these, they're going to be easy to get another one off if I drop one, crack one, shatter one, or it generally get, bites the big one in the van. I can afford to get a second one of these while I'm claiming on the insurance at £240, that's just one gig minimum. Anyways, a little bit cheaper than £240 because what you do is you join Very Catalogue. When you join Very Catalogue, they give you 30% off across the board, that includes electricals. So that £240 comes down by 30% times it by two which is your 480 pounds comes down by 30 percent it's a lot of money off works out cheaper than you can buy anywhere else anyway let's see what's in the box then i've already unboxed one so it's not a complete virgin unboxing to you i did the one when i did the first stand to make sure that everything was going to go right before i did a video on it like blue peter i made one earlier 
First of all in the box, we've got a remote control in a nice paddy packet. I'm not wielding a knife at the camera, honestly. I did. Well, some of you are might, but no. Anyway, instruction manual. Nice thick instruction manual, so it's obviously complicated to work. If you take a look in the top of the box, the nice part is, if you haven't got a flight case for them, I've found these boxes are pretty damn strong. The way that they pack them means it's going to be really easy to get them back in the box the same way. Just put my hands in. There's a rim, would you believe, on the top of the screen and on the back of the screen, which means it's really easy to take it out of the box by yourself. You've never seen a TV come out of a box that easy before. It usually brings off the packaging with it and everything else. Don't know whether it was cheaply packaged or what. This part, cover, keep it. Because your last thing you want is to drop something down the side of the box and scratch the living daylights out of your screen. At least it's going to keep it nice. And they're done in such a way again. That they're not all taped up stupidly. So you can't get it off in one piece. It comes off real easy. Slides out like that. First impressions of the screen when I unbox the other one. It's a nice matte finish. You're not going to get light reflecting off it. So if you're running scanners etc that are going to flash across it, it's not going to ruin the effect. You get a real nice sort of effect on the screen. That part, the JBM, we're not going to leave that there. We're going to take ourselves a permanent marker and whip straight across the top of it so that nobody can see you've bought cheap screens. Last thing you want is people to realise you're a cheapskate. Other thing I realised, which is a little bit strange, is when it came out of the box, it had its stand on. Did worry me. I thought, oh no, what have I bought? They're going to have to go back because I can't really mount them on the wall or mount them on a stand and have a second stand on the bottom. It's going to look stupid. Ah, ah, ah. Take a look at the back of it. Nice and easy, four screws, off pops the stand for you. The other thing I do like about these, this one's come undone in the packaging, but you come with a cable, a reusable cable tie on it, which means it's easy to keep your cables out of the way when you're packing up, and this little plug hole on the back, you just plug it in. Holds it all out of the way, makes life really easy again for you to get things in and out of the box. Okay, then now we've stopped wielding knives at you, we'll wield a screwdriver instead. No, what we're going to do is take the stand off first, so you get your TV, I've got a nice leather sofa here, so I know it's soft, there's nothing on it that's going to scratch the screen, drop it face down, because you'll need to do that again for the next part, and all it is, is four very tight screws on the stand, little tip when you're doing it, don't drop the screwdriver, no, little tip while you're doing it, is make sure that the screw is all the way out, because on the last one that I did, I hadn't quite got the screw all the way out. And then I fiddle about with the TV in, in my hands while I was trying to get the screen off and trying to get the stand off. And trying to, well, it all went peak tongue. It's better off just to make sure, just like that, they click that little bit right on the end of the thread. So, this is how quick and easy it is. This has been done in one take. So, you can see, there was nothing done beforehand. It wasn't prepared. Just put your hand underneath the screen as you're undoing the last part of the stand. Because otherwise the stand tries to fall off and the screen falls. And nobody likes a falling screen. See, done it again. Haven't quite got those right on the end. It's a little bit tedious. But, hey, what do you expect? It's cheap telly. It's cheap for a reason. There we go. Off with the stand. I wouldn't throw your stand away. Keep the screws. Because just in case you come to sell the telly TVs if you upgrade, you're going to want that stand back. Okay, I'll see you with the next part while we put the bracket in. Grab our brackets in our hands. Like that. Got a knob on the side of it. Undo the knob just to make life easier. That's the tilty knob, knob I told you about. Look at that, it's Crocker Gator. Ah, 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 ah. Hey, I tell you what, don't put your fingers in there, it's going to hurt. Anyway, I've already lined the holes up to make sure, and I've found out that it's that top hole there, so you can see why we undo the bracket so that it tilts. And the hardest one is it's going to be that hole there. 
on this particular TV. So, what we do is if you take a look down here, we've got this big pile of hardware, and you carefully select we want... No, you read the instructions, actually, and you pull out the ones that are the right size for your TV. We don't need any of these. The spacers are going to cause the TV to sit too far forwards, which will cause it to tilt on the tripod. We don't want washers that are way too big, because otherwise they'll fall straight through. So what we want is one, two, three, four washers, one, two, three, four of those screws. These things are raw bolts. What you do is you drill your hole in the wall, you put the raw plug in, you grab hold of this bolt here, you put it on the edge once it's in the wall like that, and you beat it with a hammer. I'm not joking, I mean it, you actually beat it with a hammer. It's called a raw bolt, which means you beat it in and you undo it out. These things are absolutely fantastic for mounting anything. I used them for mounting a satellite dish on the side of the house, and I tell you what, the damn thing through wind, rain, snow, hurricane season, and it still stayed up. So keep hold of the raw bolts, put them in your toolkit, they're going to be useful. Anyway, back to our bracket. Washer on screw. Screw you have to fiddle about with inside the bracket because it's a real tight hole to get into. I know some of you gents out there like tight holes, but this is the wrong sort, okay? And we slide it in there, so it looks a little bit like that. Screwdriver up against it to make sure you've got it. We lost the camera battery halfway through putting the other bracket on, this one here. So, we're going to start again on this one. As you can see, it's a nice little plastic lug on there. That works like a raw plug. It's not cut with any thread at all. So what you do is you select a bolt that is as close to the size of that lug as you can. Stick it in like that. You've got to lean on it slightly, like I said, because it's a little bit like a raw plug. But as long as you're on a nice soft surface, you haven't got to worry about your TV. Try and make sure the edge of the TV is supported as opposed to the screen, because the last thing you want to do is go pushing on the screen. As I said, this one's a little bit fiddly, so what you do is, you put it in as far as you can, and believe me, it seems like there's miles on this. And it gets very tight towards the end. Once we've got the bracket tight on the washer, to line the top hole up, once it's tight, you have got to lean on the bracket slightly, so as you've got a tight fit on the bottom one, because you can't get at it with the screwdriver now, and then we go for the top bracket. As long as your cameraman hasn't trod on the screws on the floor, and kicked them everywhere. Same again with the top one, but you always do the bottom one first because as you can see the holes on this one are actually holes as opposed to a sliding hole. And also try and make sure that because you've slid them down that they are as close as you can to level the two brackets. Because again, you're going to wind up with your TV on the wonk. The last thing anybody wants is a wonky TV. Looks unprofessional. And it puts your picture on an angle. It's top one. You can see the strength I'm having to put into it. You really want it in tight. You don't want these to come off. Because your screen's going to come crashing down. Okay, we're nearly there, guys and girls. You take your drilled out... TV bracket with your rack clamps on the back. These I didn't mention before, they're made by Chave or Shove It or Chave. Shove It is what you'd like to do with some of their gear, but these are absolute babies. They reckon they'll hold 30 kilos a piece, and I've hung on one on rigging and it's still held up, and I come in at a lot more than 30 kilos. Anyway, open them both up, take your tripod that you've already set up. This is the one that you saw. It's the tripod out of the set that I showed you earlier. Wrap them round. I'm going to have to 
Whoop, turn the tripod slightly like that so as you can see them because it always leave your front two feet you two feet at the front, your single at the back. You do have to squeeze them in because they're a tight fit. little bit like that but the tighter the fit the better because it means your screen isn't going to slide down something I did notice with these which is nice they've got a locking pin in them and if you place your wrap clamp just above the locking pin you can put the pin through it and it stops the whole assembly sliding down once you've got those on nice and tight And we clamp that one down. Like I said, real tight fit. But as we discussed before, the tighter the better, it ain't gonna slide about. A little bit like that. Just check it, and we'll turn our tripod back round. Here comes the fun part. Well, we take our screen. And it literally just hooks into place. I'll show you a little bit in a second once it's hooked in. Because it's hard to get me and the camera in behind here. Make sure your screen is central on the stand and on the bracket. So otherwise it's going to fall off. You're left with something a little bit like that. Now if you just come behind me like this, okay, the other thing that comes with these brackets I like is this bar. It goes down the side here, slides all the way through the hangers that you've just put on, goes in the other side and locks tight into position like that stop your screen jiggling about and coming off. So if you take a look around the front quickly you're then left with something that looks like that. Put your screen on the front, hide all your cables, mega bar underneath your screen. Hey presto, you've got a 32 inch stand TV on a stand mounted really solidly, it's not going to fall over and all for less than the price of the ones that are on eBay at $85.99 each. These worked out at just under £60 each to do. Practice.